Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Grab some popcorn because we are in overtime in Mr. Blumendahl's social studies class. We are learning something that has never been learned before, but that is exciting. Um, today's essential question is going to be, what was Reconstruction and how did it affect America? Please write that as your essential question across the top of your notes. And we will commence with the lesson in three, two, one. Our first left side question today is what was Reconstruction? When we talk about this idea of Reconstruction, what is it we are actually talking about? And the answer to that question is Reconstruction refers to the period after the Civil War where the South was rebuilt and the southern states were brought back into the Union. So the North won the war, the Union won the war, the South was, how do you go about establishing those southern governments? You know who's the country and not. How do you move moving forward? That's what we can about. We're going to use um, fairly often in it, and it is the freed, freed is used for to the freed act to former slaves. So once the slaves, and the final vocabulary term that's good for you in this particular unit is civil rights. Uh, civil rights are to all citizens, especially equal treatment under the law, and civil rights became extremely important during the Reconstruction era because we're trying to reestablish the rights of the new freed I'm going to go ahead and switch the slide. Our next left side question is, what were the three forms of Reconstruction? Um, there were three different forms of Reconstruction. And the first one is what we know as presidential reconstruction. And it refers to the philosophy that President Andrew Johnson applied to punishing and rebuilding the Now, Andrew Johnson became president when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, um, well, slightly more than after his second inauguration, and a week after the last battle of the Civil War. Um, was fought near Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. So President Lincoln died when the war was over, but then he was killed literally within a week. So Andrew Johnson picked up the torch and kicked forward, but um, Johnson chose to then um, kind of compromise. We're going to talk about that further. Our of reconstruction is called Gressional Reconstruction, and this is referring to philosophy that applied to punishing and rebuilding the South after the war. They wanted much to the job did. The third reconstruction was Southern Construction. This is to how Southern Cities from the old Confederacy worked to build their own region of trade. Like actually in the South, you were a citizen or you were in the South, was taking place. What did it look like? What did it build? Uh, we're going to be discussing as well. Starting on it. So, our next left question is President Andrew Johnson of Reconstruction. I'm very uh, dumbled and controversial persons that you will come um, with these two lessons. President Johnson was a Southerner from Tennessee, uh, and the only reason he was on the ballot in 1864 is that President Lincoln had to give the votes of Democrats and Southern sympathize. And because President Johnson, Vice President Johnson at that point, was from Tennessee, um, Lincoln did pick his vote, did help him to win against George McClellan in the 1864 election. Andrew Johnson was not Lincoln's Vice President first term from 1885. That was Hannibal Hamlin. So President Johnson was an accidental president because Lincoln was assassinated. Uh, Johnson had two with Reconstruction from his perspective. First was he wanted new governments were loyal to the Union and obeyed federal laws. Um, the Southern governments that existed before secession and the Southern governments that existed during secession were now considered illegitimate. They needed to be recreated from the ground up, from the perspective of the federal government. Uh, the second goal that Andrew Johnson had was that slavery had to be abolished once and for all. So he did favor the ending of slavery, and he did want new governments to be loyal to the Union and obey federal laws. This was relatively consistent with what Abraham Lincoln's vision for Reconstruction was, but he did not live to carry out his own vision. It would be very interesting to know how history would have played out if Lincoln had lived, uh, but we will never know. And uh, I got to find out that Andrew Johnson had interesting history himself. Um, Republicans in Congress considered this particular Reconstruction plan to be ridiculously weak. Uh, they did not respect it. Um, and as you will find out down the road here, 
they eventually took power into their own hands. Um, according to President Johnson, southern states should do the following. This is what he wanted the southern states to do to get back into the Union and to essentially be legit within our government. Start electing congressmen again, start electing senators again, and rejoining and participating in the U.S. government. The first of these things was that they had to ratify the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery. So the 13th of the Amendment of the, to the Constitution had been passed. It got rid of slavery, but in order for the southern states to be readmitted to the Union, they had to vote on it and approve it, um, saying that, yes, they agreed with that, they were abolishing slavery. That was one hoop they had to jump through, according to President Johnson. Second hoop they had to jump through, according to President Johnson, was repeal their acts of secession. Okay, so when each of the states left the Union to form the Confederate States of America uh, in 1861, um, they passed an act of secession, which removed them from the United States, and they then joined the Confederate States of America. Um, they had to repeal those. They had to take those back. And notice how we're using uh, vocabulary here. Ratify and repeal are vocabulary words. The thing that President Johnson wanted them to do was cancel their war debts. So a lot of the states uh, incurred a lot of debt during the Civil War. Uh, the federal government did not want them bringing that debt back into the United States, so they had to deal with their debt before they came back into the Union. Uh, fourth thing is they had to write a new state constitution. The constitutions they had before the war were invalid. Uh, they needed to be shredded and they needed to be rewritten um, to accommodate the new reality that they are re-entering uh, the United States and they have to um, basically fit into the new world that they're going forward in. Um, so one thing that happened after uh, Reconstruction began is Congress created Freedmen's Bureaus, and they were basically a bureau for the newly free men and women, um, and they were set up in March of 1865, so actually even before, Ray, um, before Lincoln died, because um, he died in April, and they were set up to help the former slaves, because keep in mind, most of the slaves were not educated, they had never been free before, you don't just set somebody free when they're 30, 40 years old and say, hey, go out and figure it out. Um, they need support, and they needed a structure of, to support them. And so the Freedmen's Bureaus created that structure. And another thing that happened during the early stages of Reconstruction is the newly um, readmitted southern states um, passed what were called the Black Codes. So they passed laws which Technically, um, the newly freed slaves were uh, citizens with the rights of citizenship, but these codes severely restricted those rights. Uh, and one of the main reasons that was done is that the, the Southern farmers still wanted to maintain the African-American population uh, as their cheap labor force. And so these codes kind of helped force them into that. Um, and they also, um, limited African-American participation in the political system. Uh, these things did not make the Congress of the United States happy, and uh, the Congress of the United States thought President Johnson's policies were too lenient. So as you're going to find out on the next slide, uh, the Congress...
took things into their own hands. So our next left side question is how did Congress approach Reconstruction? And we will go into that. Um, the Republicans in Congress believed that President Johnson's plan was far too lenient. By Congress, I'm talking about the Republican Party in Congress. Uh, and the reason two-thirds is important is that's how much it takes to pass a constitutional amendment. And that's also how much it takes to uh, override a president's veto. Uh, both of those things became incredibly important for Congress moving forward after the 1866 election. Um, Congress then passed the 14th Amendment, which is an extremely important amendment in our Constitution. Uh, it bans the denial of equal protection before the law, and it gives citizenship to all people born in the United States. So this amendment basically says that every citizen of the United States must be treated equally and have equal protection before the law. There cannot be different statuses of citizen. I um, mean, it also gave citizenship to everybody born on U.S. soil, so that it was meant to give citizenship to African Americans, but what it has ended up doing is giving citizenship to anybody who was ever born on the soil of the United States, and that is in the Constitution, and obviously that has some relevance even today. Um, so if you're wondering where that came from, it came from the 14th Amendment passed in 1867, um, during the Reconstruction era. Um, Congress also passed a military reconstruction bill, and they did this over President Johnson's veto. President Johnson did not want this to happen. Um, the Republicans did, and they had enough votes in Congress to override his veto and make it the law anyway without his signature. Military generals were placed in control of the southern states, um, people who were members of the Confederate government or refused to sign loyalty oaths were banned from participating in the government, um, and it was very, very strict. Um, the military districts are over here. There are one, two, three, four, five of them. Notice how Tennessee was not included because that was the president's home state, um, and they were all run by generals. And it was a pretty, basically those states were military o militarily occupied and were not allowed to, anyone who refused to sign those was banned from voting or serving in government. This was meant to be harsh and punishing toward the South. And so what we need to learn about next is how did this all play out? The Congress set these plans in motion. What did it actually look like on the ground in the South? And if Congress was doing this to President Johnson and he didn't want it to happen, how were the dynamics between President Johnson and the Congress moving forward? Ladies and gentlemen, I've now set the stage for the next lesson, which will absolutely positively be the last lesson of eighth grade social studies. But for now, for today, it's time for you to write a summary at the bottom of your notes, four sentences long or longer, uh, encapsulating what you have learned today in this lesson. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Mr. Blumendahl once again signing off on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.